Welcome to a quick tutorial on the ScaleLogic Remote Access Portal. This is Jeffrey Stook, Director of Solutions Architecture. So what we're looking at now is the web-based UI. Um, this is where the administrative tasks would be managed in the wrap environment. You'll notice that I have two high-level folders here. And if I click on a folder, that I've got several subdirectories that live underneath that folder. Um, I can access any of these folders if they have been shared with me or a group that I'm in. Sharing is done by simply clicking this icon and choosing a group, such as the editor group. And now this is shared with the editor group. I could also share this with an individual user. We can also create public links by clicking on the public links tab and the create public link. I can name the public link. Um, for a folder, I can choose whether I want the end user to be able to just download and view what's in that folder, download, view, and upload to that folder, download, view, and edit the folder, or to simply upload only. I can type in a password for the user and I can set an expiration date. So if I said I chose Friday, um, I think that um, someone should be able to click on the link and go download or upload the material by Friday. I'll simply click on Friday as an expiration date. At this point, I would simply type in their email click enter, you'll notice that after I have added an email address, I have an option to send a copy to myself and I can add a personal message. I can also include the password if I like. When I hit the share button, it will send an email to this person and it will send them a link where they will be able to, in this case, download files from that folder and view the files in the folder. This can come in handy if you have, say, freelance photographers and you need them to upload their material to your on-premise storage. You can simply create a link, and in this case, we would just say upload only. And you can, of course, set that expiration date. We'll move over to users. If you, you can use uh, Active Directory or LDAP, which I'll, I'll go over in just a moment. But if you want to use this field, this, this page to create users and groups, you can simply type in a username, type in their email, add them to a group and hit create. We say that hypothetically, I just created user one and they're not in a group. So I can add them to a group say add them to the audio group and the editor group, perhaps I need to add them to a new group that doesn't yet exist. I can just simply create a group. They're automatically added to that group. And then I would share certain folders with that group. If I'm done with that group, I don't need it anymore. I can simply come over here click on the trash can, and now that group no longer exists. We'll go to the settings tab. Under security, this is where we would join a domain if we were using Active Directory or LDAP. And if we come down under the admin section and storage, this is where we would mount the shares from our storage. Um, the remote access portal is storage and MAM agnostic, so you can use any storage um, that can be mounted or any MAM that you wish. What it gives you the ability to do is to actually synchronize your media or your files to a local drive remotely. So if we look over here, this is our client. You'll notice that I have the same list of folders that I had in the web UI. 
but I've only checked certain ones that I actually want to synchronize. So if we come over and look at, let's say, collaboration, and we come down to this folder, and here's all the media that exists in that folder. One of the nice things about the, uh, the wrap is that even if I were to lose my internet connection or lose my connection to the wrap server, I still maintain all of this data, all of this information, and I, as an editor, can continue working. I'll log back in. And you'll notice when I log in, it automatically starts a quick sync. Any changes that I would have made while being disconnected from the RAP server would have been synchronized back to the folder where the changes were made once I was reconnected. If I were simply knocked off the internet because of a power outage or let's say, um, you know, and my internet connection just went down for some reason, I wouldn't have to log back in. When that came back up, it would automatically start that resync process on its own. That would not uh, require any user intervention. I'd like to draw your attention to this folder called Video 3. And you'll see that I have some different media in this Video 3 folder. Let's say that the project I'm working on, all of the material that I need exists in this Video 3 folder, including all the project information and I complete my project, I'm done, and now I'm gonna move on to my next project, which would be in this video two folder. I can simply uncheck video three, check video two, and hit apply. And you'll see that a sync is going on. You'll see that video two has now appeared in my uh, Windows Explorer, and video three has disappeared. So I'm no longer taking up the space that uh, from video three and the files that I was syncing. So as far as your sync drive goes, I am using a, a USB SSD drive that is attached to my machine. It's called my S drive. And if we look under it, we've got two folders, the flash and the SMB. Those represent the exact same thing that we saw when we looked at the high level here. What I've done for organizational purposes is created a persistent mount point called wrap, and that's my in drive, and that also reflects the drive letter that we're using back at the lab in Minnesota. I'm actually sitting in Florida and working off of the servers back in Minnesota. And I've also created a persistent mount point called F for flash. You have the ability, if you're, say, working on a laptop, that you can synchronize a folder and take, grab all that media, sync it locally to your local USB drive or an internal drive. You can disconnect and take that with you. Maybe you're traveling and you want to edit while you're traveling. Um, when you get to your destination, uh, you can simply log back on, reconnect to the RAP server, and this is all over um, a secure connection, so an SSL connection. RAP uses port 443, or you can choose another secure socket layer port through your firewall. And um, once you make that connection, any changes that you've made, any work that you've done, will automatically be synchronized back to your on-premise storage. So essentially what RAP allows you to do is to take the investment that you already have in your on-premise storage and to create your own private cloud. So let's take a quick look at a diagram of, um, of what RAP looks like in the overall workflow. Here we have our remote clients that sit outside of the building and they're coming in through the firewall and the wrap server sits between the on-premise local storage pool and the firewall. Here we see our on-prem clients and they can be working off of this same um, storage pool as the remote clients. 
And as the remote clients work and make changes, those changes will be reflected back to the on-premise storage via the synchronization process over the SSL encrypted connection. So you'll notice in, uh, in, my, in my sync folder, I have an Avid Projects and an Adobe Productions. These are used to allow for bin locking uh, and, and multiple users working in shared projects. So let's take a quick look at Avid. So let's move on to the, our Avid workflow. And in, in my case, um, we're using our ScaleLogic Hyperlock client for Avid bin locking. And as you can see, I'm looking at the Media Composer on my local machine. And I opened up my test bin. And you can see that I've got a green pad lock. But over here, we can see that the Z840, which is a machine back in our lab a couple thousand miles away from me, it has a red padlock and it shows that it is owned by Z840. So let's uh, use TeamViewer and take a quick look. And we can see that my test bin is owned by my machine. And here we have the Z840. This is accomplished by, again, keeping the Avid projects on a shared folder on the on-premise storage called Avid Projects. And I'm actually syncing that folder locally. Uh, if we go back to our lab machine and we pull this up, we can see that we have our Avid Projects right here with the same project in it. And also, we're using Avid Media. Our Avid Media Files folder lives on this share. And you can see that I have that right here. I've got that synced to my local drive as well. So we're using the same pool of media. We're using the same folder for our Avid project. And as changes get made, um, those changes just simply get synced back to the on-prem storage via the ScaleLogic remote access portal. Now let's take a quick look at an Adobe production. Moving on to Adobe Premiere Productions. As you can see, I have Adobe Premiere loaded here locally on my local machine, which is about 2,000 miles away from our lab. You'll notice that I've got the little green pencil down here that tells me that my project here is writable. And if I pop over to our lab, I have the same production open in the lab, which has a red padlock, and that production right now is read only. And the way we are accomplishing this is through our wrap um, portal. And I've got my Adobe Productions. Under that, I have a remote test. This is what that production is called. These are all being synced to my local drive. And you can see here on my local drive under remote test that um, I have the padlock. Everything here is being synced. And if I go back to um, our production and go in here, you can see that we have all the same things. So as each time that I, you know, a lock is changed, that information gets updated via our, um, our wrap sync. Resolve can also be used in a shared manner as well. For those editors using DaVinci Resolve, you can easily share the same media remotely by syncing the media folders and by outputting the project and creating a DRP file which can be shared with other users that file can be imported or merged by other users as the project continues. Thank you for spending this time with me discussing the ScaleLogic Remote Access Portal. Please reach out to us with any further questions or to schedule your one-on-one -on -one RAP demo.